thought I'd do a little video today on how to brush out your doodle um, so it can be, you know, in really good shape when you, for you and when you take it to the groomer so there's less stress on the dog when they come in and they're all matted and everything. Um, this is Murray and he is our, our subject today. Isn't he a good boy? And so you, the tools that you need are a slicker brush and a metal comb, and these are what you need to get through everything. And then I use a leave-in conditioner that I spray on. Um, you can use something like that. You can also use just a water bottle and put just a little bit, like less than a tablespoon of conditioner, the rest with water, and you can use that because you don't want to brush or comb a dry coat or a super wet coat because you can break the hairs. So anyway, so this is what we're going to do. We're just going to start here. And you always pick a, wherever you start, just pick a spot and that's where you always start. I always start at a back leg. So just a real light mist. And we're going to be doing what you call line brushing. So that means you're going to pull the hair up, take your slicker brush. See how the slicker brush has the little hooks on it? Um, so, and, the, and it's rounded. So your motion on the skin will be like this. And that's how you're gonna catch all that under hair and everything um, and get it completely combed out. And you're gonna start with your slicker brush. So we're gonna pull it up and I'm just gonna brush. See how I'm brushing down and it kind of leaves a line. That's why it's called line brushing. So now I'm just gonna do this all the way up his leg. If they're really matted, of course, you know, it's going to take a little bit more effort to do that. And Mary comes in all the time, so he is a pro with this. And I always do sections, too. Like, I'll do his leg, and then I'll get the comb, and I'll finish with that. So I've got all the way up here to his hip. And see how that already looks so much um, nicer than, say, this leg here that hasn't been touched on the other side. I haven't done anything with that yet. Okay, so then after I do the slicker, I'm going to take my comb. Your comb has wider teeth and then thinner teeth. You start with the wide to catch any mats and then you go to the thin to catch the little tiniest mats. So it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to comb all the way up. And I will go back later when I finish up and do from the hawk down and all that. But this is, you know, just to give you an idea on getting them their main part of their body done. So see, even though this was brushed, there's still going to be um, mats under there and um, stuff. So, okay, and then I'm going to switch to the other side. And so now, see how this comb just goes completely through there, and that's so soft and all combed out and looks really pretty. Isn't that nice? So then we're just going to do a little bit more spray. And we're going to start up here. Doing the line brushing up here. And do our next section. I think it's a little easier. Um, to do in sections, that way you don't forget where you left off. Maybe a little easier for them, you know, not to go through, you know, just brushing the whole way through and then going back and combing. He likes to try to sit down. And if you get, like over here, which we never sprayed, so it's just super light spray. You're not making it wet. You're just getting a little bit on there. That'll help with the um, 
static electricity. It just helps keep that hair down and just a little bit of moisture so it won't um, you know, tear, or not tear, but the hair can pull and break. Okay. So back to my comb with the big side. If you're bathing your dogs at home, always use a good quality um, dog shampoo followed by a conditioner because um, the conditioner is going to help seal the cuticle so that it doesn't mat or it will help it so it doesn't mat as easily. Okay, see, and then we got that there. So I'll just move on to my next section here. And Murray's a little guy, so he's not, you know, as big. But it doesn't matter what size, um, whether they're little, big, you know. And, of course, doodles have come in, you know, the different coat types. Um, some have a lot curlier, more poodly coat than he does. Um, but it's the same thing. It doesn't matter. Also, you do the same thing if you have a double-coated breed, um, such as a Husky, a Pomeranian, you know, Malmute, um, anything like that. You're going to do the same thing because the, the point is you need to get down to the skin uh, and not just brush the top because a lot of people are like, well, I brushed. If I just, you know, brush him all over, yes, you know, it'd be like, oh, well, that looks good. But then if I take a comb, see, I can't get a comb through it. So I haven't gotten down to the skin, and that's why um, the dogs tend to mat um, so easily because dogs do mat from the skin out, unlike people who get tangles at the end of our hair. Um, the dogs don't do that. So the whole thing is you have to get down to their skin and get all of this brushed out. And even if you don't have a double coated breed, you know, um, Cocker Spaniels, I mean, you know, Collie, well, Collies are double coated, um, you know, anything like that, we still are going to do the same thing because we need to get down to the skin to get them all combed out. He's a little ticklish on his ribs, so he always kind of moves around a little bit. So I'm always extra gentle. I'm always gentle with everything, but extra gentle because he is ticklish on his ribs. It's something that you're going to be able to just sit down and do just in five minutes. But if you could just do this at least twice a week, that would really, really help out um, your dog and help out the groomer. Because you know, when you bring them to the groomers, you know, we don't like to have to shave them down. But if they're matted to the skin, we just don't have a choice because you can't, like I said, you know, this isn't combed out yet. You just can't get down to anything um, like that. So, okay, so he's combed out from here all the way down. Finish his neck. He's a good boy, Mr. Murray. Yes, you are. Also, dogs are not going to stand here like a statue the whole time and not move. You know, they need to move and shift around a little bit, you know, and that's, that's okay. They just need to stay wherever you put them. And you don't have to have a grooming table to do this. Just pick a spot anywhere and make that your designated spot for grooming. Um, even if it's just taking, for your bigger dogs, like a towel and use that same towel and put it on the floor and they stand on that towel because that means, okay, we're going to be grooming now. Um, you know, 
you can do that. So if you have the little dog, you can flop it up on the a washer or the coffee table or anywhere. Just you know, just pick a designated area to be your your grooming area and your grooming time. Try to make it you know as pleasant as possible. You know, if they're really really matted, don't go rip it through and. Um, you know, like, I'm going to get this comb through no matter what, because that's going to hurt. Um, so you want to be careful, of course. I'm just going to finish this front leg here. Same thing as anywhere else. Now, sometimes on a front leg, because they're not going to want to hold it down, so it's harder, you know, because if you're touching it, they're going to want to pull their foot up. So it's harder to do the line brushing, like I showed you before, down like that. So on the front legs... I'll pick it up and I'm going to do the same thing except just backwards. So see I'm still, you know, you can see that line. I'm still brushing in a curved motion to make sure I get that hair. And, uh, you know, and you have to be firm but gentle. I mean, because if you go, you know, really raking in there, you're going to, you know, cause little slicker burns as they call it. Um, because it can cause friction and, and hurt their skin. So we absolutely do not do that. So we're just going to brush. And of course, like every dog that I do, he doesn't really, really care for his front legs to be done. So he's going to not be perfectly still for that, but that's okay. I probably wouldn't like somebody holding my leg either. So same thing. Comb, big end. Down. And sometimes you can hold the other leg up if you want to. Just have him hold still for a minute. I'm going to turn my comb over to the, the smaller side. Okay, so see this foot is, or the leg is done. Like I said, I'll finish the feet later. Okay, then we're going to come up to the head. Um, I'll start with his ears, just a light mist. Um, ear skin is very, very tender and it can tear very easily. So if they're really matted, you have to be very, very, very careful. Um, other tender areas, of course, are the front of the throat um, and the groin area. So same thing, I'm just gonna like be taking separate little sections and brush the ear out. And I'm using a lot less pressure on an ear because like I said, that skin is so thin there. I'm going to go down the outside of the ear, and I'm going to turn his ear inside out, and I'm just, I'm not scraping over anything that doesn't have hair, basically just from the edges where the hair is attached, and I'm going to go down, and then get my comb, and run the comb through both sides. And I would do that for the other ear too. Then top knot, if you're, you know, if you are using a spray, whether it just be water with conditioner or whatever, make sure you cover in their eyes. You don't want, you know, even water. You, nobody would want that sprayed in their face. Um, so I'm just going to brush this little top knot out here. And comb. So we have to always be aware of where their eyeballs are and not, you know, stick anything in their eyes, of course. And you don't want to have the slicker brush anywhere, you know, near the eyes. Um, so, but I will do the sides of his cheeks, um, the sides um, with the slicker brush. Now he's not really matted up here, so I'm just gently going over the face. And then most of this will just be done with the comb. Okay. I'll finish this other ear in a little bit. Okay, and then um, the only thing left, I would of course go on to the other side, which I'm not going to show. Yeah, take your time and do that on the video. Um, the other thing left is their tail. Again, tails are sensitive, but tails tend to mat easily. 
because they sit on them and lay on them and roll on them and everything else. So same thing as always. Um, just gonna go, go from the bone, the tailbone out. So it'll be kind of half of a tail this way and then I'll do the other half that way. And just going to brush through. And you can hear that going through. I'm not ripping through or anything. It's just that these are metal teeth. And those are, but that sound is mats. You know? So, um, but I'm being gentle with it. And then after the mats get out, it's not going to make that sound anymore. Down here where this is matted at least. I'm not as good with my left hand as I am with my right, but for video purposes we're going to do it this way. Always holding on to the tail. Um, you always want to support the tail. You don't want to just be pulling and tugging on it. Tail. Just gonna be careful. The underside of the tail is gonna be um, very, very tender, um, so you just want to be very careful. And there's less hair, you know, right under here too, so you don't want to be just breaking through there. And then I will get my comb and see. I can just comb through this now. Same thing like always, always go through both sides of your comb. And there we go. He is all brushed out, combed out, and ready to go. If you can do this once or twice a week, it will make your dog happier. It'll make your groomer a lot happier and less time for the dog to have to be here um, to be groomed. Um, and then everybody, Murray, Murray, thank you for being such a good model today. Um, makes everybody happy and, and pretty. Thank you for watching.